Now then, uh, time for a check-up on the nation's health with concerns mm. about swine flu, as well as Labour weighing up proposals to further restrict sales of vapes or e-cigarettes. So let's uh, talk about those issues now with Dr Emeka Okorocha, who's here with me. Very good morning to you. Nice to see you. Good morning. You. Thank you. So let's start talking about uh, swine flu, because yeah. uh, there's been a recent case that was identified by someone... Mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in North Yorkshire. In North Yorkshire, that's right. Exactly. So, uh, should we be concerned about this at all? So, think? I came to speak on this before. So, it's a new strain that's been discovered with one individual, and we don't really know the demographics or where it's come from or how transmissible it is. So, basically, I think the UK HSA have now advised that people who've been in close contact with that individual now will self-isolate. So, those people would have been contacted themselves. OK, so they will self-isolate. That <coughs> sounds familiar to us uh, from the Exactly, and I think that's why the worry is, I think... But they're quite on top of it at the moment. So those people who are self-isolating will have tests every two days. And on the 10th day, after they've had five tests, if they're negative, then they don't need to self-isolate anymore. So I think it's more just getting on top of everything. I, not that the nation should be worried at the moment, but like I said, the person who was uh, tested positive had minor symptoms and recovered quite well. OK, so I was going to ask you what it's like. I mean, what is yeah. it like to get swine flu? Is it, so, is it a horrible illness or is it at, like... At the moment, it, you're going to get similar symptoms to seasonal flu, like sore throat, cough, wheezing, runny nose. And these should be mild flu symptoms, usually self-limiting. You're going to recover quite well. If you're seriously unwell, we obviously do, you know, say call 999, especially if you've been in contact with this person who's had swine flu to tell the call handler who can obviously alert the doctors and let, you, let them know that you've been in contact with someone with swine flu. So we get the PPE and act accordingly. Yeah, and do you think we've learned lessons from COVID yes, when we're dealing with a different Exactly. That's strain. why I'm not too worried at this moment because I feel like we learned a lot of lessons in terms of self-isolation, testing, quarantining and getting on top of viruses before they can spread. OK, let's talk about vaping, <clears throat> uh, because Labour is looking at this proposal uh, yeah. to ensure that people have a prescription before they use a vape. Uh, what do you make of that? So Labour have said um, if they win a general election, it's one of the things they want to crack down on. And I'm not necessarily political, but as a clinician, I think it's a good thing, because I've actually uh, spearheaded some campaigns when talking about some of the risks of vaping to young people. These come on the back of some statistics that it's tripled in the last five years of how many people between the age of 11 and 17 are actually using vapes. So one in five people are using vapes. And I don't know about you, but I don't feel that old, but back in my day, I didn't, oh, no, see, I any, <laughs> I didn't see any vapes. I didn't see any vapes. And we don't know the long-term consequences of vaping, what implications that could have on the NHS. And we do know in the short term that most vapes will contain nicotine, which is a stimulant and an addictive substance. And a lot of children will be getting addicted and getting hooked on these vapes and taking more and more and more and have negative effects. And then this could obviously be a problem in the long term. And yet, you know, there'll be plenty of people that will say, I vape, but I don't smoke. It's helped me give up smoking. And yeah. even on the NHS guidance, they say that e-cigarettes are far less harmful than yes. cigarettes. So they would say, that, why would you do anything to block That's a general misconception. Moving? The mis misconception that they're much healthier than cigarettes. This is because you're getting an e-liquid, obviously you're inhaling it via like an aerosol or a vapour, rather than actually smoking and tobacco. However, we don't know the long-term effects and we do know that it's so much more accessible for children. And this, if you look at the marketing of a lot of these, e, um, these vapes, I'm not a vape connoisseur myself, but they have flavours such as bubblegum, blueberry, strawberry. They have bright colours and it's becoming a very social thing. So you see kids in schools at break times now all vaping and passing around vapes. And like I said, we don't know what it holds in the future, but we do in, in the short term, you could have nicotine addiction and then withdrawal. OK, I, I suspect we might be talking about this again with you in the future. But, I suspect uh, we will. Dr Omega Aurorica, thanks so much for coming in. Cheers, thank you for having me, Anna.